Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. It's Friday, March 31st. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Fewer children are eating and meal debt is rising since public schools resumed charging students for lunch. Now, some states are making lunch free for everyone again. The pandemic proved that it is possible and that it is doable and that it is the right thing to do. In a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke will report on state and federal efforts to help more students receive free meals. Missouri Republicans are condemning the indictment of former President Donald Trump related to alleged hush money payments to cover up an affair with an adult film actress. St. Louis Public Radio's Jason Rosenbaum reports. GOP Senator Eric Schmidt called the indictment, quote, a political prosecution in search of a crime that sets an extremely dangerous precedent going forward. And Congressman Jason Smith of Salem said, quote, the truth will be exposed in the days and months ahead. During an interview Thursday on Fox News, U.S. Senator Josh Hawley contended the indictment was, quote, raw power from Democrats. This is just unprecedented in American history, and the only way out now is to win. Democratic Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois, though, said the investigation into Trump must continue without interference and added that no one is above the law, not even a former president. I'm Jason Rosenbaum. St. Louis Public Radio. The Missouri House has passed a state budget proposal of more than $45 billion. The package now moves to the Missouri Senate, where changes are expected. The House version is billions less than Governor Mike Parson's initial draft. Republican Senate Appropriations Chair Lincoln Huff says Missouri is in a position to spend money in key areas. We need to use the tax revenue that we have that's in that's in the bank, proverbial bank right now, to invest in our state, invest in our to invest in our education systems, our roadways, our workforce, you know, all those things. Huff also says he will take out language added by the House that bars the state from spending on anything associated with diversity, equity, and inclusion. St. Charles County's prosecuting attorney is resigning effective immediately. Tim Lomar is going into private practice. He says he cannot give the job the energy it requires and still have time for his family and health. St. Charles County Executive Steve Ellman will appoint Lomar's interim replacement. He is accepting letters or emails from people who are interested in the job. The successful candidate will need approval from the St. Charles County Council. North St. Louis neighborhoods are bearing the brunt of illegal dumping, which can include old tires and hazardous materials like oil and paint. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports, police say enhanced efforts to catch offenders are working. Officials issued a record number of criminal summonses for illegal dumping last year, nearly 700. Total fines more than doubled. Police find offenders with help from citizen reports and hundreds of surveillance cameras in alleys and vacant lots. People in majority black neighborhoods, including Wells Goodfellow and The Ville, are most affected. Alderwoman Norma Walker represents the 22nd Ward. Who wants to go out of their back door or the lot next door and look at a bunch of garbage and trash? No one. Secondly, it's a health issue. Trash attracts rodents and abandoned tires can be breeding grounds for insects. One police officer in St. Louis responds full-time to dumping complaints. He's assisted by other officers who choose to work overtime. I'm Jeremy Goodwin, St. Louis Public Radio. Missouri education leaders are once again looking for ways to keep teachers in the profession. The state's Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is launching the second phase of a commission studying teacher recruitment and retention. Last fall, the Blue Ribbon Commission said Missouri should focus on increasing teachers' salaries to fix shortages. Now, the commission is studying climate and culture in Missouri schools. The State Board of Education's president says working conditions have to be addressed along with pay. The new recommendations are expected at the end of the summer. Well, opening day for the Cardinals came with a surprise this year. Pitcher Adam Wainwright singing the national anthem before yesterday's game at Bush Stadium. He has aspirations to be a country music singer once his playing days are over. 
Fans packed Bush yesterday for the annual party that is the first ball game of the year. Buffy Phillips from Tower Grove says even though it's a long season, opening day is very special. The camaraderie of just knowing everyone is here to support our team. You don't, I mean, you can feel the electricity in the city that everybody is here to support our home team. You can't beat it. The Cardinals lost yesterday's wild season opener 10-9 to Toronto. Lunch was free for all public school students during the pandemic, but they had to begin paying again last fall, and qualified families had to sign up for free or reduced cafeteria meals. Now, many school districts in the Midwest say fewer students are eating and meal debt is soaring. The U.S. Department of Agriculture is proposing a change to try to get more free meals to children. As St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports, some want a bigger solution. In the Melville School District outside of St. Louis, kindergartners file into the cafeteria for lunch. (laughs) Today's menu? Breakfast for lunch. French toast sticks, sausage links, sweet potato tots. Oakville Elementary students slide their trays toward Pat Bros, who's ringing the kids up. Thank you. Bros says last year, when school meals were free for everyone, more kids came through her line. There was a lot more kids. They all... Everybody wanted breakfast and lunch. That wasn't just in St. Louis. When the program was free for all kids last year, schools across the country served more than 80 million more meals compared to the year before the pandemic. But now families have to pay again, and low-income families have to apply to qualify for free or reduced-price meals. In Melville, they're seeing fewer kids in their subsidized program. And at the same time, meal debt is way up. School lunch debt is rising across the Midwest and the nation. In the Sioux City Community School District in northwest Iowa, students have racked up about $22,000 in debt. Rich Luzi runs nutrition for the district and says the government could have handled this change better. Giving it for two years or whatever and then abruptly stopping it instead of phasing it down. Okay, this year we'll cut it down to about half and then easing into it. That could have helped families prepare to readjust and rethink. But instead, many families didn't realize they had to sign up to get free lunch. And the change came as inflation meant their money isn't going as far. Some states are trying to fill in the gap. Minnesota, Colorado, and three other states have passed legislation to offer free school meals long term. There are also calls to go back to universal free meals at the federal level. Crystal Fitzsimons is a director at the Food Research and Action Center. The pandemic proved that it is possible and that it is doable and that it is the right thing to do. The Biden administration has a more gradual idea. The USDA proposed a new rule to expand something called the Community Eligibility Provision. It allows schools and districts with a lot of high-need students to serve free meals to all of their kids. The USDA wants to lower the threshold, allowing more schools to qualify for the program. U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack announced the proposed rule change at a school in Colorado. We're providing greater flexibility, more participation in a program, resources that take a little of the pressure off. Before the pandemic, about one in three school districts in the U.S. were already serving free meals to all students through community eligibility. Fitzsimon says this proposal could bring even more in. This is a really wonderful thing because it increases the number of schools that can opt to offer free meals to all their students, but it doesn't actually increase the amount of federal funding that the school would receive. So, you know, we're still hoping that maybe Congress would put in additional funding. Because states or schools have to fund these programs themselves, not all eligible districts choose to participate. In Nebraska, a lot of districts are reluctant to sign up for the community eligibility program even if they qualify. The state's legislature has multiple school lunch bills. One proposal would incentivize school districts to sign up for that community program. It's from State Senator Elliot Bostar, a Democrat who represents parts of Lincoln. It's it's difficult to have a family these days. It's expensive. And so anything that we can do to make it a little bit easier to lighten the load or ease the burden um, is, is worthwhile. Bostar says the biggest hurdle in his state will be finding a way to pay for this. I'm Kate Grumke.
St. Louis Public Radio. Kate reported the story for Harvest Public Media. That is a collaboration of newsrooms in the Midwest and Great Plains, including St. Louis Public Radio. Our news director is Ashley Listenby. St. Louis Public Radio is a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. Happy birthday tomorrow, Dad. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com.